Green Flight Challenge is a NASA Centennial Challenge designed to get a small general aviation sized airplane to fly 200 passenger miles per gallon at 100 miles an hour. So now we're looking at kind of useful missions for a general aviation aircraft. And the thing that's really interesting about it is up to now, you know, your typical general aviation airplane like a Cessna 172, if you put four people in it, flies at something like 60 passenger miles per gallon. And so the purpose of this competition was to take that and increase it by a factor of about three and a half. And so increasing the efficiency of these airplanes does a couple of things. First off, the reduction in cost associated with flying means that it opens up the sport of the pastime to many, many more people. You know, in our case, we have an electrically powered airplane. So rather than burning fuel, we're using electrons. It's a lot quieter up in the air for us because the only noise that you hear from us is the propeller. There's no exhaust noise or anything like that. And it's also a lot cheaper because electricity is eight cents per kilowatt hour where I live. And uh, Avgas is about seven, eight, ten dollars a gallon depending on the day. So. My job with the team was there's two parts to it. First off, I'm the team leader, which means that uh, help make sure that everything ran smoothly. And the second part of the job was to do the trajectory planning and flight optimization for our competition flights. So we work closely with the meteorology department at Penn State, specifically David Stoffer and AJ Deng, and they provided us with a high resolution wind field data for right here, in fact. And uh, we used that high resolution data to plan trajectories that for Tuesday's flight, the energy efficiency flight minimized our fuel consumption over the course. And for today's flight, allowed us to fly as fast as possible while still coming home with enough electricity available to show that we could meet the half hour reserve energy requirement as part of the competition. It performed, yeah, exactly the way we expected it to, really. It was incredible. It's, it's really good. We, I guess one of the things that, that all the people that are working in electric propulsion these days are learning, at least for aircraft, that it's very, very important to consider the entire propulsion system from the batteries, through the speed controller, through the motor, and into the propeller. Uh, it's not good enough to just find a propeller off the shelf, stick it on an electric motor, find a speed controller. It's, it's not going to work nearly as well as it will if you, as if you consider the whole system end to end. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. Pipistrel has expertise and experience uh, with electric flights since 2007. We were actually the first ones to fly a two-place electric-powered self-launching glider called the Taurus Electro. Since then, uh, we have launched a second generation called the Taurus Electro G2. And with this airplane, we decided to put together two of those. So G2 plus G2 makes a G4, hence the name the airplane carries. The engineering, design and development and the building of the airplane all took five months. We started December 20th and finished off end of May. So it was a pretty remarkable feat and we wouldn't have done it with no previous experience and without the capability of rapid prototyping we have at the company. This aeroplane was designed and produced uh, around the set of rules published for this competition. However, because of its peculiar shape and features, we are able to use it as a test bed for different propulsion systems. You will notice that the power pack nacelle is mounted on the mid-wing. It's not in the fuselage as that would have been conventional. So this allows us to change the propulsion modules relatively easily, meaning we can go from an all-electric, that's what we have installed now, to a hybrid, that's what we tested already, or to a conventional powertrain giving uh, different combinations of endurance and performance capabilities. The electric propulsion in the aeroplane is built around a 200 horsepower equivalent electric motor that we've designed and built, uh, including the power pack. The batteries are organized with three battery groups, so three redundant systems for safety, totaling about 1,100 pounds of mass that actually comprises the whole battery system. This would be the cells themselves, the BMS, the battery management system, the whole cabling and fixture elements. At the moment, with the existing battery technology, what we are seeing now with all the competitors, this is pushing the limits, sort of. You see that the aeroplanes are uh, not near what is regarded conventional, and they are not yet in a shape or form that could be handed over to future customers. However, with the lessons learned, I think that next step would be hybridization of the aeroplanes, taking advantage of electric propulsion when the aeroplane is close to ground, so it can stay quiet, 
it doesn't interfere with community noise and then when you need to go the distance if you need to go the distance at all you can switch over to a generator unit of any kind and make the aeroplane useful so you take advantage of the best aspects of electric drive without uh, making it uh, inferior due to the existing battery technology. Avidon is the brand of choice for pilots who want innovative, easy to use avionics. And the new IFD 540 GPS Navcom sets a new standard for simplicity in communication and LPV navigation. As a slide in replacement for existing 530 series navigators, and with a highly intuitive touchscreen control, the IFD 540 makes it much easier to access the information you want when you want it, reducing head down time and making flying more enjoyable. Finally, you have a choice, and the choice is easy. Avidyne. Well, we've learned primarily how to scale up electric propulsion from uh, the powers we've been used to, namely 40 kilowatts, that's the motor we use on the Taurus Electro G4 stock aeroplane that we sell, all the way up to 200 horsepower equivalent, that's 150 kilowatts, so almost making it five times more powerful. We've learned about really efficient and uh, funky aeroplane concepts we may want to tackle in the future or not. The biggest lesson learned is that we are able to successfully test the powertrain which will go in our future product called the Panthera. It's a fourth place Part 23 General Aviation certified aeroplane coming out next year. It will have three powertrain options, the conventional, so piston powered, a hybrid, an electric powertrain in the front with a piston-powered range extender and an all-electric powertrain. So basically this aeroplane was not only tested in terms of uh, competition qualities but also provided lots of feedback for future development of the Pantera. You know, today we've gone and demonstrated that we can fly for well over two hours, we can fly for 200 miles in an electric airplane. Two years ago, the first electric-powered airplane flew for about 20 minutes at Oshkosh. We've come an awfully long way in those two years, and I'm expecting over the next five years us to progress extremely quickly as well. I don't think it's going to be very long before we have commercially available small electrically-powered airplanes. There's lots of people out there right now working on electrically-powered airplanes, both ultralights and light sport, and even general aviation-sized airplanes. So it's really, really exciting right now.